Uh, hello, welcome to our Bible study this week. Um, really grateful and thankful that you guys have decided to join us. Uh, we've done a online Bible study this quarter on Sundays that has been uh, using Hebrews chapter 11 with the idea of using those examples of faith uh, with the idea of um, examining ourselves. Uh, and I really like the idea of using uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse 5, uh, that says, um, Try your own selves, whether ye are in the faith, and prove your own selves. I think the idea of using that verse and the sentiments in that verse is a fantastic way of studying the book of Hebrews. Uh, the book of Hebrews is one of my favorite uh, New Testament books to study. Uh, it's really deep. There's a lot of content in there. Uh, and chapter 11 is uh, one of the better known chapters, um, but using it with the idea of examining our own faith and testing our own faith and using the idea of these examples all throughout this chapter and seeing how that translates to us today and what I can do to use those examples to strengthen myself and hopefully through this study to help strengthen you uh, and what you may be doing every day throughout your walk in life. Uh, the book of Hebrews, like I said, it's, it's a super deep book. All throughout the book, um, the first part of the part of the book, the first few chapters discuss um, the superiority of Christ, which I think is really important uh, in light of uh, the material inside the book of Hebrews. Uh, it's about the superiority of Christ, about how he was a better spokesman than the prophets. Uh, that's in chapter one, verses one through three. It talks about how Christ was better than the angels. Uh, that's by virtue of His deity and Christ's humanity. And that's the rest of chapter 1 and the first part of chapter 2. It talks, the book talks about how Christ is uh, better than Moses because Christ is the Son who gives us a heavenly rest. That's chapters 3 and the first half of chapter 4. Uh, and it also talks about how Christ is better than Aaron, superior to Aaron, the prophet, uh, because uh, Christ's priesthood is superior to Aaron's priesthood. And it's unique that Moses and Aaron are mentioned uh, in light of our study this week. Uh, I've been assigned Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. So the idea that uh, Christ is mentioned early in the book of Hebrews as being superior to Moses and superior to Aaron is a really fantastic way for us to, to look and study uh, and see what happens in this verse. And the last two weeks we've talked about Moses, just Moses himself. This week's a little bit different. And the rest of the book of Hebrews talks about the superiority of the new covenant. Uh, we talk all the time about New Testament Christianity uh, and what that means to us today, uh, that we are New Testament Christians. Uh, but when you compare uh, our Christian walk and our Christian way of life to those in the Old Testament, and what those people were, were obligated and instructed to do. Um, the superiority of this new covenant is mentioned in the book of Hebrews, specifically chapter 8. Um, the second half of chapter 8, it talks about how it's the new covenant is better based on uh, better promises. Uh, it's, it's a better sanctuary in chapter 9, as talked about. And then it's based on a better sacrifice, which is ultimately Christ's sacrifice in chapter 10. Uh, and then the rest of the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, the second half, talks about uh, some really emphatic directions. They're called exhortations, but that's just really specific, emphatic directions for us to use uh, in our everyday life. Uh, and it's the group of people that it was written to. The author is obviously unknown of the book of Hebrews, but the idea that uh, the, these specific instructions were given to those people at that time, they still apply to us today. Um, there's, there's a few few exhortations, instructions that are given to draw nearer to God and to hold fast. That's the second half of chapter 10. And then chapter 11, which brings us to our study, talks a lot about running the race uh, and, and running that race of faith with endurance. Uh, and that's specifically what I want to talk about today. Uh, chapter 11 gives us the explanation of faith that's required to manage the course of our lives. Uh, which is to run the race, if you will, and how our faith will guide us, how these examples of these people all throughout chapter 11 can give us strength, and how the challenges we face will never be have to face. We never have to face those challenges alone because of our faith in God. We're truly never alone. 
verses 1 through 7, which we've talked about this quarter, talk about a faith that pleases God through those individuals. Uh, and verses 8 through 22 talk about a faith that embraces the promises of God. And then 23 through 40 talk about a faith that helps us overcome the world. Uh, and that, that's the context in which our, our text is set today. Uh, the last two weeks, like I said, have been about Moses. So if you, if you would, get your Bible out, uh, and we'll start in verse 23 to give us some context for the text of my, ver- my, my assignment this week, which is verse 29. Starting in verse 23, it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Uh, And if you haven't studied, if you haven't watched the last two lessons, I would urge you to go do that. I think Eddie Woodard taught two weeks ago on Moses, and it was a fantastic lesson on on Moses and his faith and his example. And then Lonnie talked last week about the Passover and Moses uh, and what an an incredible event that was. And that leads us to the verse, uh, uh, the text of, of my lesson today, verse 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. Uh, and this event uh, listed in verse 29 that happened, it's in Exodus chapter 14, and we're going to go there in just a minute. Uh, but it talks about it by faith, the nation of Israel, led by Moses and Aaron, coming out of the Egyptian bondage, uh, walked across the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. And it's unique that Moses is mentioned in the prior verses about not having fear. Uh, that's something that we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, but um, it, it's it's an interesting idea uh, when we look at Moses being mentioned specifically as not being afraid. Um, and then we'll talk about what happened with the nation of Israel as they uh, as they got ready to cross the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14. So uh, with the idea of examining ourselves, we've read this text and... I like to to ask a lot of questions when I teach Bible class, a lot of introspective questions, hopefully to get spur you to think a little bit. And I won't lie, I do a lot better in a setting where there's some give and take, where there's live people here. Obviously, that's not the case. But I would welcome some feedback if you have it, if you've got answers to these questions. Uh, If this spurs you to ask more questions, you reach out to us and we'll be happy to study with you. But in the idea of, of being afraid, and, and Moses leading the, the nation of Israel across the Red Sea. Uh, I've asked the question, uh, how does this example help me to examine myself, my faith, and how does, this help me to, how, how does it help me to use that faith to guide my life? So we're going to go back to Exodus chapter 14, and we're going to read that account, and then we're hopefully going to draw some lessons out of that, and, uh, and then that will, be, that will be our Bible study for this week. So you start in Exodus chapter 14. Um, we're going to read the entire chapter, not all at once, but we're going to read the chapter. So I would urge you to follow along if you're studying at home. Get your Bibles out and follow along at home if you would. Uh, starting in verse 1 in chapter 14 of Exodus, it says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before Phi Hahirath, between Migdal and the sea, opposite Baal Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are bewildered by the land, the wilderness is closed to men. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot, and he took his people with him. Also he took six hundred choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel, 
And the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Pahahirath before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Uh, let's just stop right there. Um, and, and we'd already discussed the idea mentioned in Hebrews that Moses was not afraid. Uh, but here it specifically says in chapter 10 that when Pharaoh drew near, the nation of Israel, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and they saw the Egyptians marching after them, and they were very afraid. So I asked the question, why were the people afraid? As we've talked about the last couple of weeks in these lessons, uh, the nation of Israel had been kept safe from plagues. Uh, if you know the story of the book of Exodus, about what happens to the nation of Israel, about Moses and Aaron uh, bringing plagues upon the nation of Israel because Pharaoh uh, would not allow God's people to leave. Um, you think about what the nation of Israel has seen. Uh, they've seen these plagues that are just unbelievable devastation to the land about what's going on around them. It's unnatural, uh, and it's just a monumental event, something they had never seen before, much like us today and what we're dealing with. Um, the nation of Israel, like Lonnie discussed last week, and it's a really good lesson, it's a really great breakdown of the, the Passover lamb and what was required of the nation of Israel to keep them safe from the Passover lamb and from the, the Passover lamb killing the um, uh, killing the firstborn of, the, of every household. They were given very instruction, very specific instructions to follow so that they would be safe. Uh, and in that relation, that idea, it sounds a lot like New Testament Christianity. We've been given very specific instructions for us to be safe, for us to be safe in the arms of God, for us to be in the light, for us to be members of His church. Uh, we've been given very specific examples and instructions to follow. Uh, so it's it's something that I can relate to. Um, we've been given instructions on how on uh, hearing the word and believing what we hear and confessing the name of Christ, taking on the waters of baptism, and then putting off our old life uh, so that we can uh, walk in in newness of life and putting the old life and the old man behind us and allowing our faith in God, the faith that God is true to His promises, promises that are laid out all throughout the New Testament. And faith that God will never leave you nor forsake you in this life, that you can have forgiveness for your sins. Uh, make no mistake, you will sin. We all sin and fall short. And that you can have eternal rest in heaven. Those are all promises that are laid out in the New Testament. Uh, it's laid out, in, laid out in the context of in the book of Hebrews, in contrast with the book of Hebrews in that context. No more taking your sacrifice to the high priest. Uh, how much more convenient is that? new way than the old way. Uh, there's no more taking your sacrifice to the high priest like you had to in the Old Testament. There's no more rolling forward of your sins and shortcomings. You get forgiveness of your sins. Uh, you can now work with fellow Christians to become to come together, to worship God, and to be stronger than ever to achieve the ultimate goal of heaven, to spread the gospel of Christ. And Christ is the avenue, that, and it's mentioned in Hebrews. He's the avenue. He's the reason. He's the means by which we have access to all of those promises in the new covenant. So the, the specific instructions that the nation of Israel has just seen before they fled the land of Egypt about the, the Passover instructions, it's very similar, and I can relate to those. All of us should be able to relate to those as we go about and we study our Bibles every day. Uh, we are given very specific instructions at times on how we should live and how we should respond to certain situations and certain people uh, and certain actions. Uh, and we're, we're told how to handle those through our faith. Uh, we're given instructions on how our faith can strengthen us and guide us and keep us safe, uh, keep us from sin. It can help us uh, overcome temptation. Uh, so when it comes to the nation of Israel, they've seen all of these things. They've seen the plagues that the one true God has brought upon the nation of Egypt. Uh, they've, they've experienced the, the Passover feast and the, the death of the firstborn of the Egyptians who didn't follow those instructions. And now here they are fleeing the land of Egypt. And as they're fleeing and Moses is leading them, they've set up camp before they cross the Red Sea. And the Egyptians now are pursuing them. And the nation of Israel looks up and sees them and they're afraid. So I would ask the question, we obviously have more 
more knowledge now about how the event turned out, how the situation turned out for the children of Israel. But what were they afraid of? Uh, and, and in relation to that, knowing what I know about the New Testament and knowing what I know about God, knowing what we've studied about these people when I examine myself, what do I have to fear? Uh, what causes me fear in my life? Uh, if I pursue my faith in God and I allow God's uh, will to be uh, shown throughout my decisions in my life and how I carry myself and, and the actions that I take and the actions that I don't take sometimes, uh, what do I have to be afraid of? What do you have to be afraid of? Um, so I think that's a good that's a good start for examining ourselves. Uh, let's go back to Exodus. Let's go back and read. Pick up in verse 11. Uh, it says, Then they, being the children of Israel, they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. And along those lines, along the idea of being afraid, uh, not only were they afraid in verse 10, verses 11, 12, uh, the children of Israel complained. They actually pointed out to Moses and asked, Why have you done this? Why have you brought us out here to die? Why We told you, to paraphrase, we told you to leave us in Egypt. It'd be better to serve in slavery than it would be for us to get out here and die in the wilderness. And in relation to my life, maybe in relation to your life, uh, when you translate that to today, um, I have had periods in my life where... Um, Things have been very hard and difficult, and we've all experienced recently a very difficult time, something we've never seen before in our lifetime. Um, has there been a period in the last two or three months where you may have thought, you know, maybe it would be better if, if, if I weren't doing this? Uh, why, why, is, why is this happening to me? Uh, and that's what the nation of Israel is asking. You know, we, we, they trusted Moses, and they saw what God could do. And they wanted the freedom. They wanted the promise uh, to, uh, that they wanted to fulfill the promise that God was going to allow them to live in the promised land. Uh, and they they couldn't see the end goal yet, uh, so they get just out of Egypt, and something starts chasing them, uh, something from their past, and they ask the question, you know, maybe maybe it was better for us to have stayed where we were. Uh, and I think that's something that um, all of us can relate to. I can for sure, and I'm sure if you really examine yourself and your life, uh, no matter where you are in life, I'm sure all of us have had moments where we've questioned what we're doing. Um, am I doing what God would have me to do? Uh, maybe we've questioned what God would have us to do. Uh, some of us, some of us have been in that boat before, uh, and I think um, I think this is a great study. It's a great example and a great lesson to pull out of here. Um, that the nation of Israel had seen some unbelievable events. Uh, they had experienced some some unprecedented things happening in their world. And all of all that the nation of Israel knew at the time was a life of slavery. And here comes Moses to lead them out. Uh, and they start out and they ask, you know, the first sign of trouble, well, did you bring us out here to die? Uh, and, and And that's a question... That um, as as knowing that I was preparing this lesson, listening to the lessons the last couple of weeks about Moses, uh, I respect Moses' answer even more. Uh, the first thing Moses tells them is, do not be afraid. Uh, and I asked the question here in my outline, have you ever been afraid? You ever lost faith that God says he would do what he says he will? Uh, have you ever wished that you had made a different decision in your life? Um, sometimes uh, folks would would experience those kinds of things. Um, how often do we put our lives, how often in our lives do we put our faith and our trust in something other than God? Um, how often how often do we trust money? How often do we trust or chase work or, or earthly success or anything else that you would allow to be a driving force for making your decisions? Uh, you put faith in, in things that take 
your attention and your focus off of God. Uh, and, and it's like I've, I, I tell my children sometimes, uh, everything that you say yes to means you say no to something else. Uh, so as you go about and you make decisions, uh, are you making decisions that would continue to put God and His will for you uh, at the top of your priority list? Um, so we all have hardships. Uh, we've all we've all been there. We can all relate to the to the children of Israel. Um, with with without question, we've all had uncertainty and doubt, uh, fear, worry. Maybe we've had anxiety about it. Uh, I think those are perfectly normal re- human responses to to a situation um, that that especially a situation much like the nation of Israel that none of us have encountered in our lifetime. But God, God, God has made promises, um, and 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 when you study the New Testament, you look at the idea of fear. How can I handle thing? How can I handle fear when things happen in my life, uh, and I become afraid, or maybe I start to doubt? Uh, you look at Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. It says, "For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of love, and of a sound mind." God didn't make us to be afraid. God didn't build us with a spirit to walk around afraid of what could happen to us in this world. Um, Now, fear is a normal response. Uh, But God did not give us a spirit of fear. God gave us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, And God is, we'll talk about it in a minute, but God is all powerful and God, God has the ability to protect us. Uh, If we do God's will and we put our faith in God, God has the ability to protect us. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. When When you become afraid, do you pray? Do you pray about it? Uh, How's your prayer life been in the last three months? Uh, How is your... uh, How's your examining yourselves, as we've studied on Sunday morning, when you examine yourself and your life and your situation around your life? Uh, what have you found to be thankful for? What blessings have you enjoyed these last few weeks? Uh, where have you found the good and what has happened in this world? Um, that's a great way to examine ourselves, to test our own measures of faith. Uh, and not just in this current situation. Sometimes things happen to us that nobody else knows about. Uh, there are things going on with families and, and husbands and wives and parents and children and grandparents that nobody outside of those families knows about. And sometimes those things, those situations uh, make us afraid. How do you handle that? Do, do, you, do you remind yourself that God has given you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind? And do you pray about it? Do you cast your cares upon God and do you make your requests known to God? Like it says in Philippians. Uh, it's a great way to examine yourselves, to, to sort of self, self-test. self uh, And if you've fallen short, I would ask the question, what can you, what can you do to correct it? Uh, how, can you, how can you become better at not being afraid of what's going on in this world? Uh, so we go back to Exodus chapter 14. Uh, we'll start in verse 15. Uh, it says, uh, starting, we'll read verse 14. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's what Moses finishes t- saying to the children of Israel. Verse 15, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over his army, his chariots, and his horsemen. And then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I've gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud of a cloud. And darkness to one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all night. Uh, And that's another miraculous wow moment. Um, I I, I struggled as I read that to imagine what that must have been like for the nation of Israel. 
Uh, they had had the angel of God as a, as a pillar of cloud going out before them, leading the way. Uh, and, and as they became afraid, and what Moses, uh, God gives Moses instructions about parting the Red Sea, and the pillar of cloud comes behind them and protects them. I, I, I read that the last few weeks, and just, it's astounding, and it's amazing. And it relates, it really hits home for me, um, and, and what I do every day. Uh, you think about the nation of Israel having the Red Sea before them, having a, a huge obstacle before them, and they're stuck, and they can't go any further. And the Egyptians are chasing them, and they become afraid. Uh, so they've got an obstacle in front of them, and then they've got something in their past coming up behind them. Uh, and for me, I think that's something that I can obviously relate to throughout my life. Uh, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you, as a Christian, put away the, the the things you've done in the past and not allow those to affect the decisions you make in the future? Uh, and, and and a lot of that is dealt with through my faith. Uh, that's what that's what the Book of Hebrews. It's what the study that we've been looking at on Sundays has been about. Uh, it's about allowing our faith in God and what God has done for us and what God will do for us to, to help guide me to make good decisions and to stay in the presence of God uh, and to stay in the light, to stay in His church, to stay with God's people, to do God's will. Uh, those are the things that I've thought about. And I ask the question here, you know, for me specifically, how much faith do we have in God's protection? A lot of us watching this and studying today are, are uh, we, we've got examples of, of personal issues and things that we've overcome, sickness and, and, and some of it horribly tragic events. And, and some of us have endured and, and been through some, some things that are, that are awful. Uh, but God has seen us through those things. God has been with us and God has guided us. And how much do we recognize and show our appreciation for what God has done for us every day uh, as we examine our faith? Um, the idea of, of the angel of God and that pillar of cloud moving behind them, uh, it, it, it gave me some, some pause the last couple of weeks. And, and as I studied and prepared this material, um, I, I stumbled across just reading uh, Psalm 121. Uh, it's kind of a lengthy deal. It's eight verses. Um, but uh, here, David is obviously the writer of the psalm uh, through inspiration. But you start in Psalm 121, verse 1. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth even forevermore. Uh, God is our protector. Uh, now, does this mean that bad things are never going to happen, that we're never going to have hardships or sickness or death or tragic events that, that we experience? Absolutely not. Uh, but through our faith in God and because we know that God is true to His Word, we can know that even though a situation will be hard for us or, or we may think it's impossible for us to see it through, uh, that if we put our faith in God, that God is with us. God's protecting us. God keeps the enemies at bay. He offers up divine protection. He'll see you through as long as you have faith to guide your actions. Uh, and, and for me, that was one of the biggest uh, parts of this chapter that really jumped out at me that I probably struggle with in my day-to-day -day life. Um, not, not necessarily the fear, but the fact that uh, you can move on from things you decisions you've made uh, there's no decision you've made. There's no sin you've committed that if you're not willing to repent and truly repent and turn and change your, your ways, uh, that you cannot get forgiveness for. You know, If you're willing to repent and change your life, uh, you can get forgiveness and you can leave the things that are chasing you behind you. 
Uh, and you can put God between you and those things. And those things, like, uh, like it says in verse 20, uh, the, nation, the, the Egyptians were chasing and they didn't come near the other one all night. Uh, and that's astounding to me. You know, the fact that that's a miraculous event, obviously it's, it's, a, it's hard for me to understand and describe, but um, it's an unbelievable event. Uh, and it, it's, it's important for me to understand and remember that in my everyday life, that I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to sin. Uh, I'm going to fall short. I'm going to, to either omit to do something, fail to do something, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the wrong decision sometimes. Uh, but I can, I can put God between me and those decisions once I get forgiveness, and I can leave those behind. And, um, and then I can move forward. And even though there's obstacles in my way, I can find a way through those obstacles if I put my faith in God. All right, so let's go back, let's go back to... Um, to verses to Exodus chapter 14. We're going to read uh, the rest of the chapter, um, but uh, let's look here. All right, so you start in verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on the right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel the day out of the that day, out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt, so the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and His servant, Moses. Uh, so God ultimately protected the nation of Israel. Uh, God punished those who didn't put their faith in Him, uh, the Egyptians in this case. Um, it, imagine what the nation of Israel has seen by this point. Uh, they've been through the plagues, like I said. They've been through the Passover, the, the killing of the firstborn, which was the last event before they left Egypt. Um, they, they've been in slavery their whole lives to a nation that's driven by Pharaoh, uh, one, one who demands love and respect and claims to be a god of sorts to the Egyptians. Moses and Aaron come, delivering a message of salvation and freedom and with the backing of the one true God. Uh, plagues come, the numerous unnatural events occur, uh, finishing with the Passover ritual and the instructions and the death of the firstborn, and then Israel has its freedom. But now as they undertake that freedom, it's threatened again. God delivers the nation across the Red Sea, but not without a bump in the road. So I ask the question here, how many times have we done the same thing? Uh, how many times have we come, how many times in our lives have we come upon an obstacle uh, or maybe something behind us and we didn't feel like we had an avenue to overcome it? And that's where I think the lesson here is. Uh, our faith offers us perspective. Uh, it offers us perspective for any problem that we would see in our life. Uh, it offers us a chance to say to ourselves uh, and to the world around us that, that, that knows what we're dealing with, uh, I can, I'll show you what God can do through my life. Uh, I'll show you how I can handle this decision by putting my faith in God, this situation by putting my faith in God. Uh, let's go back to 2 Corinthians. I think that's a, it's a good bookend um, to, to the lesson. Uh, but you go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, we'll read verses 3, to, 3 through 10. This is Paul writing to the, to the church at Corinth. Uh, start in verse 3 in chapter 6. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, and distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, 
and labors and sleeplessness and fastings by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. And whatever we face in life, uh, and Paul had faced a lot. Uh, Paul lays out a pretty good roadmap here for for how we can deal with these trials, those hardship, the short, shortcomings, how we can be a shining light in the dark world that our faith will see us through. Our faith in God, our faith in His promises and His protection and, and our understanding of God's will for us. I hope this study has been beneficial. Uh, I hope you guys have uh, gotten something from it. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews is a fantastic book to study. Uh, it's an awesome, awesome book. There's a lot of lessons in there. Uh, and looking at the nation of Israel and their, and their path across the Red Sea through their faith uh, is something that I think all of us can relate to, can help us every day. I hope you've learned something. Thanks for joining us.